So we left off talking about um, quantum numbers. Again, every electron in an atom can have four, has a set of four quantum numbers. First one is n, the principle, tells us what energy level the electron is on. The second number is l, the azimuthal, which tells us what type of orbital. Um, zero stands for s, one is p, two is d, three is f, and so on and so forth. The third quantum number is the magnetic, and it tells us if you have multiple orbitals on a sublevel, like for P, D, and F, which orbital the electron is in. And then the spin tells us if it's the first or second electron in the orbital. Plus one half means first, minus one half is second. So let's look at a few problems that involve this. Okay, first off, for principal quantum level n equals 5, determine the number of allowed subshells, the different values of L, and give the designation of each. Okay, so if you remember, um, hold on, let me call this up. If we're looking at our periodic table, we can see the different sublevels for an energy level. So each row we can talk about as being an energy level. So energy level 1 only has an S sublevel. Energy level 2 has 2s and 2p, two sublevels. Energy level 3 has 3s, 3d, and 3p. Energy level 4 has 4s, 4f, 4d, and 4p. So you can see whatever energy level you're on, you have that many sublevels. Energy level 5 would have 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and then after f is g, and you go on through the alphabet. So, for principal quantum level 5, okay, the number of subshells, sublevels, the fifth energy level has five sublevels. And we, I already mentioned them, 5s, 5p, 5d, 5f, and 5g. And then the values of L, remember 0 is always s, 1 is always p, 2 is D, 3 is F, and so 4 is G. So that was just kind of an interesting way of asking us, you know, what are the sublevel notations or how these quantum numbers match up to what we already kind of know about with electron configuration. So here are some questions. These used to be more common on the old versions of the AP exam, but I still think they're relevant. You know, quantum numbers are still used and talked about in general chemistry. So it says here, are these sets of quantum numbers possible? And so we can look at these possible this possible value column and try and see some patterns. So first we see 3, 1, negative 1, plus 1 half. 3 means we're on the third energy level. And on that third energy level, there are three sublevels, S, P, and D, the types of orbitals. So we can have 0, 1, and 2 as possible L values. In fact, every time that you are looking at the first principal number, the next number, the azimuthal L, goes anywhere from 0 to n minus 1, one less than the principal energy level. So yes, this 1 is a valid quantum number after the number 3. Next is the third, the magnetic. Okay, and so we can have um, up th between negative L and positive L as possible values for our third quantum number. And so since 1 is the second quantum number, I can have negative 1, 0, and positive 1. So yes, that is indeed a valid third quantum number. And then plus one half, of course, is valid. So what does this mean? This set of four quantum numbers tells me where one electron is in an atom. And so it's really describing to me a 3p1 situation. Third energy level comes from quantum, the first quantum number, n. One means p. Okay, so a p sublevel, there's three p orbitals, and we label them like a number line. Negative one, zero in the middle, positive one. So three, one, negative one means third energy level, and then there's the electron is on a p orbital, the first p orbital. 
and then the plus one half means it's the first electron in that orbital. If this said minus one half, then I would have an electron there, there, and there, and then the minus one half would be this electron because it would be the second one in that electro in that orbital. Okay, but that's not what it says. It's, it was plus one half. So if this was the last electron in an element, okay, then it would represent the 3p1 electron. And which element is that? 3p1, okay, that would be the third energy level, and then the first element in the p sublevel. Okay, so 3p1, that would represent the last electron for aluminum. Now, if we're talking about, like, lead, number 82, the 13th electron in lead would have the same four quantum numbers as the last electron in aluminum. But then there'd be a lot more sets of quantum numbers for a lead atom. There's only 13 sets of quantum numbers for an aluminum atom, because aluminum only has 13 electrons. So look at this set. I've got 2, 2, negative 1, positive 1 half. So the first n equals 2. That means it's our second energy level. How many sublevels are on the second energy level? 2, s and p. So the second quantum number can only be either z 0 or 1, representing s and p. So this is an invalid set of quantum numbers, because the L quantum number cannot be the same as the N quantum number. How about this set? 4, 1, 2, negative 1 half. Energy level 4, 4 sublevels, S, P, D, F, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this 1 is completely valid. 1 represents a P sublevel. There's three orbitals, and they are labeled negative 1, 0, and positive 1. Uh-oh. This 2 is not valid. Okay, the third quantum number has to be between negative and positive of the second quantum number. So that is invalid. Last one here. Okay, 5, 2, 0, negative 1 half. Energy level 5. Okay, there's five sublevels, S, P, D, F, G, represented by 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 0 is valid. Okay, I'm sorry, <laughs> 2 is valid. 2 is with is between 0 and 4. 2 represents D sublevel. A D sublevel has 5 orbitals that we label negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So this 0 is totally valid, and the negative 1 half is valid. So this is a valid set of quantum numbers. Okay, again, 5th energy level, 2 stands for D, and D, there's five orbitals, and I number them negative 2 through positive 2. So this electron is in here, in the 0, okay, on this orbital, and negative 1 half means it's the second electron in there. So I have to put 1 in each, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then I come back, double, double, and then this is representing a 5d8 situation. All right. So again, if it had been a positive one half, I would have only had this electron, this electron, and this electron. Negative one half means it's the second electron in that orbital. All right. If this was the last electron for this element, 5d8, which element would it be? So it's a little tricky, 5d8, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, it's this column, all right, nickel, palladium, platinum, it's not that one, <laughs> dysprosium, I think, ds, okay, so it's in that column, 5d, remember, if I look over here, the fifth row, the d's are one less, so this is actually the 4d row. So 5d8 would be platinum. All right. Don't go crazy. 
Yes, don't go crazy over these quantum numbers. Okay, again, there's not going to be a direct question, but you know, I think when you look at them, they really do kind of sum up electron configurations that you we have done in the past. Um, I will give you some practice problems with them, so you become a little more comfortable with them or whatnot, or so for the, some of the quiz questions. But um, again, these are all the result of intense math solutions to Schrodinger's wave functions and all that lovely stuff. So our next section is going to be on photoelectron electron spectroscopy, which is the concrete proof, the data that proves that this math was all right. All right, hang in there. Hope this helps, and I'll see you soon.